Welcome back to part two of episode four. I'm your host, Aaron, and this is Muncast. It, it sounds like you really had a hand in, in a lot of the aspects um, of the United Nations. Is that true? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, for like The International Day of Peace is one of the biggest events every year. Um, we have multiple celebrities um, coming into the UN, the Messengers of Peace, uh, we have Ban Ki Moon ring the peace bell and address uh, the students who come in. We have around um, 700 students come in for the International Day of Peace celebrations at the UN headquarters. Um, and we do all sorts of different sort of activities with them. We link up with one of the peacekeeping operations in the field, and there is all sorts of presentations and so on. So that's a really big deal, not only at UN headquarters, but around the world. It's celebrated all over the place um, and being able to work on events like that was really great and especially so since you're doing it on behalf of the UN um, it adds even more about like a little bit of value to what you do yeah that, that sounds like it would be an amazing opportunity with all the events that you're involved in so one of them you mentioned you're just talking about the International Day of Peace uh, was one of the major projects that you got to work on um, was there a particular project even if it was the International Day of Peace, that was your favorite project that you got to work on while you interned at the UN? Um, yeah, so the International Day of Peace definitely was one of my favorite ones, but also the Model UN workshop we organized. Um, the UN runs Model UN workshops every now and then, uh, usually once a year, either in New York or somewhere else around the world, and um, teaches Model UN leaders about UN for month the um, UN's approach to model UNing or teaches them how to simulate the UN more accurately. And I actually did that workshop in 2013 as a participant and now being able to go back and organize it was a really cool opportunity as well, uh, especially because a lot of the people who came to this workshop were like like-minded to what I'm doing, right? They're all model UNers too and it was great to be able to provide this opportunity for them um, so that's that's another project I really enjoyed. That sounds really interesting because I think as as munners from around the world, uh, so many of us are exposed to different type of procedures, whether it's UNA, USA, uh, Thymon procedure, or in this case, UN for MUN. Uh, one thing I want to really highlight and ask you about because I'm very curious, uh, were your expectations of what it would be like working at the United Nations different than uh, what you expected them to be based off of your model UN experience? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. So, because as a model UN, you don't learn much about the work of the Secretariat. Mm. You mainly learn about what diplomats do, what delegates do when they are debating in the General Assembly, in the Security Council, etc. But I mean, the Secretariat work is just organizing the conference for most model UN conferences. While the Secretariat work at the UN is so much more far-fetching, and there are so many other things that are done. Um, so that was that was a great opportunity or a great experience to also learn about that side of uh, the UN. So yeah, the expectations from like model UN to the real UN didn't necessarily translate in that sense that. You know, I learned all about it beforehand already. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely different ex different outcome to what I was expecting. So let's let's take a step back and and could you walk us through what an average day uh, working at the UN was like? Yeah, for sure. So I usually start it around like nine thirty ten in the morning. Okay. Um, so not that early, which was which was great because I. Uh, could sleep until 8 a.m. or so, which was very nice. Um, so yeah, I got in around 9.30 or 10 a.m. Um, I started out by checking my emails, because the UN obviously gets emails at all hours during the day. Um, and I was being, I, I had control over one of the general UN accounts that was associated with our section. Um, so I checked email, started responding to that, um, and I didn't already dove right into whatever project I was working on at that time. So, for instance, it was the Model UN workshop. 
um, the email communications usually took longer because there were lots of questions coming in because we had around um, 120 people come to the UN uh, for the workshop. So obviously lots of emails coming in, so emails took more of my time. For the International Day of Peace, um, I was working on researching uh, and so on. Um, so that was kind of the main part of the day then. And I usually was done by, let's say, 6.30, 7 p.m. ish. It really depended on the day. Um, had time for lunch in between as well. But a lot of time of the day was really used up by preparing for whatever event was the next that was upcoming. Um, and there, the, the tasks varied. Um, yeah. Wow. So it sounds like you were, you were almost constantly busy. Uh, one of the things I want to ask you about is what was the most challenging aspect of the internship, but also what was the most rewarding aspect of doing the internship? Um, the most challenging was to kind of transition from academic life into professional life. I had not, I, I had worked summer jobs on the side or besides studying, but um, I only graduated from university in the summer just before um, going into the internship and I had gone straight from high school into university so I had been in the academic bubble all my life essentially and transitioning from the academic side of things to real life was quite a challenge because it's much more fast paced they often expect the exact opposite of you what of what you have been taught in university, be it things like um, writing something. Like in the professional world, you usually want to keep yourself uh, to a minimum amount or a small amount of words because nobody wants to read a 2,000 word essay or something. <laughs> they just want a uh, page bullet pointed. So that was very different. When in university, they usually have you write 10 pages or so and so many words and you start adding all these extra words to read your word counts. Oh, yeah. And that was um, very different and obviously much more fast paced. You don't get a deadline in that's three, four weeks away. You get a deadline that's tomorrow and then oh, wow. it has to be done. Um, so that was, that was a big transition. Uh, obviously very rewarding once I had kind of made the transition. Um, another very rewarding experience wa was to see the uh, workshop we did run so well and see all these Marlianas really from around the world being super happy about the opportunity they had of coming to the UN and them being so enthusiastic of taking what they've learned during the workshop into their Marlian communities and spread the word. Um, that was super rewarding as well. So can we highlight uh, that that conference, the the a conference you did with Munners from around the world. Can you explain what the conference was, first of all? Right, right. So it was a um, three-day workshop, which we um, started on Friday, and it was given by uh, Bill Yodef, who is, uh, or who was, he recently retired, um, a project manager at the United Nations for the Global Learning and Teaching Initiative, and he has been researching about Model UN for many years, and he has been developing his the UN for, the UN for Mun approach. So he's the, essentially the father of UN for Mun for um, about seven years now, since 2009. Oh, wow. um, and he was providing most of the teaching, but we also had um, experts come in, such as the director of the Security Council, who provided more insights on how the Security Act Council actually functions. Um, so we had three days of very intense learning, starting with the General Assembly uh, highlighting the differences between traditional model, uh, I'm going to start calling it traditional model UN um, from here on, basically the model UN that mo everybody is familiar with. Um, is that is that UNA USA procedure, Thymon procedure, yeah. can, you, can you clarify? UNA USA um, or Thymon, either one. It's in, it, both really, because both are wrong in how they simulate the UN. Hmm. Um, so um, essentially, we started learning about how traditional model UNs, so uh, UNA, USA, Thai Moon, etc., 
um, are actually doing it wrong and one of the main differences to the way the UN actually works. And then we started explaining um, more in detail how the work of the real UN um, or, or the way the real UN works can be implemented in model UN conferences and that's what we call then the UN for Mund approach and we started um, teaching them about UN for Mun with regard to the General Assembly first. Uh, we started teaching them about the rules of procedure, about the leadership structure, the way decisions are made at the United Nations. Um, and then on the last day of the three-day workshop, also did that for the Security Council. Um, and those were, those were some really intense days. Um, I think we started at 9 a.m. every morning and we went on until 5 p.m. Uh, and it was basically hardcore teaching throughout the day. Um, so everybody who came to the workshop definitely learned so, so much uh, and could take so much with them. Wow, that, that sounds really interesting. I, I'd love to talk to you more about this uh, later on, but I want to I wanna focus back in um, on, on this conference. Is this a conference that is open to the general public? So, for example, if there is somebody listening right now that, that says, hey, UN for MUN, that sounds very interesting. I would love to go learn at the United Nations. Would they be able to sign up for this? Yes. So, the, um, yeah, the workshop is advertised on the uh, webs of the on the UN Forum on website, which is outreach.un.org/mun, and once a, de a date for um, the workshop is set, it will be available on the website or on the UN Forum on Facebook page. The page is just called UN Forum, on. and everybody who is interested can sign up for it. Ideally, with previous model UN experience. But otherwise, um, everybody is welcome to apply. And then I, I, I recommend applying as soon as you see that um, the, the workshop is advertised because we, the UN accepts on a rolling basis and there's only so, so many they, people they can take. Like this year, there were a lot more applicants than we could accept in the end. Um, but generally speaking, everybody is welcome to... Um, submit the application and is welcome to come for the workshop once accepted. That sounds like a really exciting opportunity. Um, hopefully hopefully there can be some people who, who hear this and, and sign up for it. Um, oh, but yeah. I want to, yeah, yeah, I want I want to transition back um, into, uh, ba back into your work experience with, with the United Nations. Um, mm -hmm. So in the position you worked in, uh, did you get to work with people from around the world? Yes. Yes, the um, UN is very international. Um, there are people from all corners of the world, from all continents, um, and that, that already starts with the interns. The interns were a very international bunch. I was sharing kind of an office space with interns from uh, Canada, from China, from India. Uh, there was another German intern. Um, so many different nationalities already for the interns, and that just that, that's the same for um, the professional staff as well. Um, our team was uh, made up of people from Italy, from Antigua and Barbuda, from the United States. So, and, and that's, yeah, just continuing all throughout the entire uh, organization. So, they're, they're really people from all around the world. It's a, and that's kind of part of the fun that you meet people from so many places, so, kind of like in Model UN itself as well. Yeah, because in Model UN, a lot of the conferences will, will have people who are at least interested in international relations, and oftentimes at the larger conferences, there will be delegates from around the world. Um, but one thing I want to I want to ask you about this is: were, Did any of the other interns that you worked with do Model United Nations as well? Actually, quite a lot of interns I met did model UN or model Parliament, model NATO, something along those lines. Yeah, it's, it was a pretty common thing to um, when you ask somebody, "Have you ever done model UN? Or have you heard of it?" to get the answer, "Yes." Ah, oh, that's that's actually good to hear. I'm, I'm glad that they I'm glad that they know about uh, model model UN. Please click here to listen to part three. I'm your host Aaron, and this is Muncast.